Well, good evening and welcome to another broadcast of the Renewed Covenant Fellowship. I am your host, Brother David Jones, and we're glad to have you tonight. Appreciate you being here with us on this beautiful Friday evening as we're coming on to another Sabbath time. Coming tomorrow morning as the sun comes up, we'll be uh, in the Sabbath day. And we're excited. Uh, it's been a, been a busy week, and we're so glad to see you all. Hello, Miss Carrie. Appreciate you joining us tonight. Uh, appreciate you being with us. Um, we hope that uh, you've had a good week as well. Uh, we're excited about what we're going to be talking about tonight. We'll be in Psalm 119 again, going into the second stanza. And so we're uh, uh, excited to continue on in that teaching time. Of course, you know, we're coming into the spring feast, coming to the uh, end of another um, biblical year and getting ready to start a new biblical year. And so these uh, these new spring feasts, new spring days are coming and uh, we're getting excited about that. We're going to be talking about those as we get closer to that time. Uh, already started planting my garden, already started to put out some things. We planted some lettuce and some kale uh, out in the in the yard and we've got our seeds started inside for some onions and broccoli and Brussels sprouts and uh, peppers and all that kind of good stuff. And so we're excited about the springtime. I've got chickens now. I don't know if any of you have seen my posts on Facebook. I've got some chickens now and we've got one that's got a little, little foot issue. And so we're having a doctor on it and things like that. A little, little concerned about it, but, uh, praying the father will uh, watch out for my animals and take care of my animals. But, uh, we are glad that you're with us tonight and share this to your page and, uh, Invite others to come and be a part of the broadcast. Uh, that's good, Miss Carrie. It get your garden ready. You know, and we need to try to try to feed ourselves as best as we can. So, uh, lots of uh, strange things happening in our society today. Amen. Well, uh, we're gonna pray tonight, and we're gonna ask the Father's blessing on the broadcast. Um, several things to pray about. We've got uh, uh, some. Uh, Special unspoken request that's been mentioned, and uh, and then a friend of ours, uh, her father had uh, some some surgery today, and uh, want to uh, uh, keep in prayer um, <clears throat> Philip Wright over here in North Carolina, uh, and then also for Brother Ed Pardell uh, on the road dr uh, driving a truck. Uh, continue to pray for him, and then my cousin uh, has a special request uh, for her son. Uh, for Father to uh, do a great work in his life. And so we want to pray for those things. Hello, Brother Paul. I'm, uh, yeah, here gearing up also on those gardens. That's exactly right. We need to try to keep those things ahead of the game and uh, get those things ready to go. <clears throat> We're talking about prayer requests. I uh, also want to pray for my son. He's had a, uh, an accident on the job, uh, damaged his knee. Uh, so we do need to pray for him for father to heal him. And then, uh, and then others, of course, like I said, we have some special unspoken requests and father knows every need before we ever ask it. So we want to keep those things in prayer, uh, and keep those things in mind also. Uh, and then also our friends, uh, you know, uh, all across the country and all across the world. Uh, we've got friends that watch us, uh, around the, around the world, uh, in Australia and over in, uh, uh, India and uh, uh, over in the Philippines. And so we're excited about uh, uh, being able to minister to those people and be a blessing to those folks. Um, so Buck's uncle Gerald is in the hospital uh, with the COVID-19. All right. So we'll definitely pray for that one uh, and keep that one in, in prayer. And we'll mention that one tonight. Uh, and then also for our Sabbath meetings coming up tomorrow, I know uh, many of you will have your, your, uh, fellowship meetings there in your locale and wherever you're located. And so we need to pray for a father to uh, bring more in to hear the truth, uh, give us opportunity to go out and do the highways and hedges and compel them to come in um, and to uh, go into all nations, baptizing them in the name of the father, son, and the Holy spirit. And um, that's our, that's our great commission and our great commandment of what we're commanded to do is love love the father and love others and to go out and to be a witness, uh, for the truth and for the gospel. And so we need to pray father, give us boldness to do that. 
uh, in these days. Uh, so let's pray tonight. Pray with us uh, there, if you will, and uh, pray for us. We'll pray for you. Amen. Father, we do love you. Thank you for the day. Thank you, Father, for the time you've given us to set aside tonight to get into your word. We thank you, Father, for your love and kindness. Thank you, Father, for your 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 provision and how you provide for us on a daily basis. Father, we do pray for your word tonight that it would go forward and it would not return void, but that it would accomplish exactly what it set out to do. Father, we do ask you that you would have your will and way in our life, that you'd hide me, Father, in the center of your will and guard my lips and tongue, that I say nothing that would be a cause of a reproach. Father, that it would be a hindrance to the truth going out tonight. Father, we do ask you also that you would continue to hear the prayer requests and those that have been mentioned uh, for uh, for uh, uh, Buck's uncle. And then, Father, also uh, for Christopher, our son, that you would uh, uh, touch his body. And then also we pray for uh, uh, Ed on the road. Uh, and, then, uh, and then others that have special requests. My cousin, Father, that uh, praying for her son. Uh, Father, we do ask you that you would uh, work in, uh, in his life. Uh, Father, we do ask you that you would uh, uh, heal those. We pray for Brother Jay Fletcher down in South Carolina, that you'll continue to raise him back up from his surgery. Uh, Father, and others that have special needs. You know every need, you know every heart before we ask it. Uh, and, and Father, we just ask you to move in our midst. Uh, we do pray, for, Father, for our chickens and uh, pray, Father, for this little little Daisy May, Father, that you would help her uh, and help us to know how to treat her. Uh, Father, that you would uh, give us wisdom and discernment. You tell us, Father, in your word that a righteous man regards the life of his beast. And, and Father, I'm, uh, I'm concerned about my, uh, my chicken, and I ask you that you would... Uh, Give us wisdom and discernment concerning that. Uh, Father, we ask you that you would bless the broadcast tonight. We ask you, Father, that you would call sinners out of the world into a place of repentance. Father, that you would encourage the believers to continue to walk in accordance to your ways. Father, that you would continue to add numbers to your, uh, to your, uh, to your fellowship and to your assembly daily. Father, that your word would not return void that it would accomplish exactly what it set out to do. We love you. Thank you and praise you for your goodness and for your mercy. Move in our midst and use us for your glory. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. And amen. All right. Well, we're going to get right into the teaching time. And uh, and I just realized I did not change chairs tonight. And so my wife will probably say something because I've got my rolly rocky chair. And uh, so normally I put in a, in a straight chair so, uh, so I can behave. And she gave me the look. And so I'll try, I'll try not to, not to lean back and relax too much, but, uh, uh, I'll try to behave as best I can, but we're going to get right into the teaching time. Uh, and we're going to go to, uh, the, um, let's see if I can get this where I want it to go. Still messing with this thing, trying to figure this thing out. Here we go. Let's go here. There we go. No, we don't want to do that. We don't want to do that either. And we don't want to do that. All right, hold on. There we go. That's what I wanted to do. All right. Very good. Modern technology is scary, and it? it is absolutely scary. So um, we're going to get into Psalm chapter number 119 tonight. And we're going to be looking at uh, what the scripture talks about, about biblical cleanliness. Okay. And so uh, if you've got your Bibles, uh, look in Psalm 119 and we're going to do the next stanza. And we talked about it before. Psalm 119 is broken down in stanzas. Each stanza is eight verses long and each one represents a letter of the Hebrew alphabet. And every one of the verses in or uh, of the stanzas in Psalm 119 deal with the Torah and deal with the instructions of the Torah and the beauty of the Torah and uh, keeping uh, faithfulness to the Torah or the law, as uh, our English Bible say. And so tonight we're going to be looking at the topic of biblical cleanliness, okay? Biblical cleanliness. And, uh, and so we're going to get right in, into this. So let's begin reading in Psalm 119 in verse 9 through 16. It says, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way 
by taking heed thereto according to thy word. With my whole heart have I sought thee, O let me not wonder from thy commandments. Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. Blessed art thou, O Lord, or O Yahweh, teach me thy statutes. With my lips have I declared all the judgments of thy mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of thy testimonies as much as in all riches. I will meditate in thy precepts and have respect unto thy ways. I will delight myself in thy statutes. I will not forget thy word. So when we look at these things, we're going to try to break this down uh, each time uh, for each verse uh, into a progression, if you will, towards cleanliness, towards biblical cleanliness and what the Bible says about biblical cleanliness. Well, when we look at what, what cleanliness is, it means to make clean. And of course, uh, when he's talking about the Bible in a moral or a spiritual sense. Now, we've been studying in the book of Leviticus, uh, chapter 12, 13. We're getting into chapter 14, uh, chapter 14 and 15 tomorrow, I believe it is. Uh, we're on a three-year cycle. And uh, so we're dealing with the laws of cleanliness and uh, unclean and clean. And, and of course, we're dealing with the leper and the cleansing of the leper and, and uh, the, uh, uh, being ritual, ritually clean and ritual cleansing. Uh, and, and all of these were imposed uh, uh, unto Israel and upon Israel because of the sin of the golden calf. And that's what a lot of people don't realize. A lot of people realize and they think, oh, well, you know, that's the law. And I, I mean, yeah, it was the law and it, it, it does have a purpose and it does have a, uh, a meaning behind it. Uh, but uh, we're, we're talking more in a moral or spiritual sense. Uh, tonight than we are in a physical sense. Uh, physical cleanliness is good. You know, we heard the old saying that cleanliness is next to godliness, and you know that, that that's not in the Bible. And if if it is, maybe someone can show me where that's there. But uh, I I I've never found that. But we're talking about moral or spiritual cleansing, that which is the cleansing of the soul. Uh, making us biblically clean before Yahweh, before the Father, not so much as physical as it is to be spiritual. It means to make free from defilement of sin and from faults, to purify from wickedness or to consecrate or dedicate. And, and when we talk about that which makes us unclean, you know, we, we talk about the, the, the things of, uh, of, of sin. It's literal sin that makes us unclean. Uh, I wanted to start off with Titus chapter one, verse number 16, because this is a good example of those that, that think they're clean and they think they're, they're uh, spiritually or morally clean be before the Father uh, just because they make a profession of faith. Uh, modern religion teaches us that that, uh, you know, all you got to do is just believe, you know, we're under grace. And so just, just believe, just believe, just believe. Uh, and the Bible clearly says and clearly states that even the devil believes, Satan believes and trembles. Uh, and so he knows who the father is. He knows who Yeshua is. He knows uh, about the Holy Spirit. He knows who the angels are. Uh, but yet he's not going to be redeemed and he's not going to be saved. Uh, but Titus 1.16 is very clear. That they profess that they know Elohim. But in works, they deny him being abominable and disobedient unto every good work, reprobate, okay? And so when we consider what the scriptures talks about, it's talk about it's just talking about cleansing and, and, and what it means to be unclean. And we use that word abominable, okay? So that word abominable means detestable. Uh, and the Bible talks about abominations and things that are abominable, if you will, or detestable to the Father. Uh, Leviticus 11, 10 through, four, uh, 10 through 42 talks about eating unclean meat as being an abomination, okay, as detestable. And, and let, me just, let me just say that also that if it was an abomination then, it's still an abomination now. And we have to keep that in mind that um, uh, Yahweh doesn't change. The book of Malachi says that, uh, that uh, he changes not. And so therefore, uh, if it was sin, then it's sin now. If it was abomination, then it's an abomination now. Uh, and when you look at Leviticus chapter 11 concerning the eating of unclean meat, uh, 
that was the first place we find in our Bible where it says, be ye holy for I am holy or be ye separate for I am separate. And he separated Israel in a lot of different things. And one of them was the, of their diet and the things in which they were to partake of, uh, physically as far as uh, eating, um, uh, unnatural affection was an abomination. A, a man lay with a man or a woman lay with a woman, uh, uh, th do those things that are unnatural laying with beasts and things like that. Uh, the type of society that we live in today in America and even in Israel, uh, Tel Aviv, uh, uh Israel is uh, the largest per capita, uh, homosexual, um, city in the world. And, uh, so here we are in, uh, in the Holy land there in Israel and it's leading the way, uh, in sodomy and sodomites and, uh, and perversion. Uh, but that's an abomination, uh, unnatural affection. Uh, idolatry was an abomination to the father. Deuteronomy 7 verses 25 and 26. It was, it was an abomination uh, to, to worship idols and to participate with idolatry. Um, worshiping Yahweh as the heathens worship their mighty ones was an abomination. Uh, 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 applying uh, pagan and heathen holidays and celebrations to the Father uh, was uh, and is an abomination, Deuteronomy 12, 31. Uh, not giving the Father your best when it comes to the sacrifices. That too was an abomination there in Deuteronomy 17, 1. And, and these are but just a sample of those things that make us un, unclean. But sin as a whole, sin in general, uh, makes us unclean. And we're going to look at what uh, Psalm 119 talks about tonight, about being biblically clean. First of all, we look at verse number 9, and we say, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. Uh, first of all, cleansing comes by obedience. Uh, you're not going to be clean uh, uh, biblically in the way of Yahweh without being obedient. I mean, that's all, that's all there is to it. Uh, it says, well, how or wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed to the word. The word taking heed or the phrase taking heed means to guard, to keep, or to observe. Okay. We don't keep the commandments to be saved. Well, we keep the commandments because we are saved and because we want to be clean before our heavenly father. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word. We've got a little song that we sing. Uh, we used to sing with youth group. Uh, it, it goes, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? Did I do that right, Mr. I did that right. Amen. I did. She, uh, her or Sarah or some of our other kids are usually the ones that, that did all the hand signals while I played the guitar and sang. But uh, how, do, how do we cleanse our way? How, we do that by guarding, keeping, observing Yahweh's word. It's very, very, very important. In John 15, 3, Yeshua said, Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Clean through the word. Clean through the word. Yes, Miss Carrie, we're having sing-along time tonight again, as always. Amen. 2 Timothy 3, 15 through 17, Paul writes, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Yeshua Messiah, of course, Christ Jesus. All scriptures given by inspiration of Yahweh and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of Elohim may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. Right there it is. Perfect, complete, Thoroughly furnished unto all good works. What is the Holy Scriptures? The Holy Scriptures that's able to make you wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Yeshua Messiah. Cleansing and being clean and 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 uh, 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 being clean before Yahweh comes by obedience to His Word. 
we become obedient. We are obedient to his word and we begin to grow in him. I, I saw a thing uh, on uh, uh, on Facebook the other day and I and I, I can't remember exactly where I where I found it, but I think I saved I think I saved the picture. Let me see if I can read it to you. Um, <clears throat> I think I saved the picture. I may not have. Um, my, my, uh, knowing me, I did not save it to my phone. No, I did not save it to my phone. Um, I could have swore I did. Anyway, uh, what it's talking about is a Hebrew mindset and a Greek mindset. And of course the Greek mindset uh, teaches you to, uh, based upon feelings and, uh, based upon your, you know, uh, uh, being convinced, uh, about something being emotionally convinced, but the Hebrew mindset is, is uh, trusting in the Father and beginning to obey his word, and then you will grow, and then you will learn, and it will make more sense, and then you will have great joy because of being obedient. And that's why that's what the Bible talks about. How will we cleanse our way? By taking heed, being obedient, and observing and keeping the Father's word. <clears throat> But then not only does uh, cleansing come by obedience, but obedience comes by seeking. In the next verse, Psalm 119.10, with my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. The word sought means to seek. With my whole heart I have sought thee. With my whole heart I will seek thee. With my whole heart. That's why it's in the heart. It's not about the mind as much as it is the heart. Now we can think all day long on good things or think on, you know, think, think about the Lord and think about Yeshua or think about Jesus. But if it's not in our heart, we're not going to act on it and we're not going to do it. Matthew 6, 33 says, but seek ye first the kingdom of Elohim and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. <clears throat> it's important understanding what it means to seek <clears throat> when you, when you, seek after the father, when you seek after Yeshua, when you seek after Elohim, you're, you're looking for something. You're, you're, uh, um, you're going after something like a treasure hunt. You're going after something uh, seek ye first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. You know, you're not going to be clean without his righteousness, but yet cleansing comes by obedience and then obedience comes by seeking, seeking for his righteousness, okay? But then seeking leads to laying up. Look at the, look at the next verse, verse number 11. It says, thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. That was another song we used to sing. It says, thy word. Have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. That's, that's another song that we, that we used to do. Yes, Miss Carrie, musical notes again. Yep. 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 Musical interlude. Uh, to hide is to store or to lay up. When you hide something, you store it, you store it away. You know, we're doing the garden now. And so we're going to hide or lay up our vegetables. We're going to lay up our, I, I planted onions. I started my little onion seeds today. So I'm hoping I put, I, I did, uh, how many plants did I do? I did 18 plants. <clears throat> and so I'm hoping to have some good onions because I like, I like onions. I, I get that from my mother. Um. <clears throat> And so, so we take our vegetables and we hide them away. We can them, we freeze them, we, we put them away when, until we need them. Well, the word is a lot like that because when we hide it in our heart, it's there. See, uh, I, I firmly believe that we're coming into some difficult days where we're going to be challenged. We're going to be challenged with our faith. We're going to be challenged. I mean, they might even take our Bibles away. You know, just because we had a constitution and just because we were founded as a Christian nation, that don't mean we're going to stay that way. I mean, we could end up like like Nazi Germany. We, we don't know. We could end up like 
like uh, uh, Russia and the Cossacks or, you know, we don't know. That's why it's important that you take the word and you hide it in your heart because, I mean, they can take your, your physical Bible away, but if you've got it in your heart, they can't take that away. That's there forever, okay? You hide it in your heart, and they're that why? That you might not sin against the Father. How do we know what sin is except we don't have the word? What is it? First uh, John 3, 4, sin is a transgression of the law. And so how do we know what sin is if we don't have the word? And if we don't have the word, then we don't know what sin is and how, how, to, how to combat sin and how to deal with sin. We got to know, we, we gotta know, know sin's, sin's operation before we can know sin's remedy. <clears throat> That's right. <clears throat> That's right, Brother Paul. Get his word in us and a part of us. Not, not just have it in a, in a book on the shelf, but have it, not here, but have it in here. <clears throat> you hide his word in your heart. See, th think about this. Think about this. The, the average person in the, in the Old Testament, even in the Bible days, even when the writing of the New Testament, the average person did not have what we have as far as a Bible. Now, they might have had a scroll. <clears throat> uh, the king was supposed to have a scroll, and the high priest was supposed to have a scroll. Uh, every time they got a new king, the king was supposed to write out an, uh, uh, his own copy of the Torah. <laughs> that would be quite an undertaking, amen? Boy, you know, if every preacher, if every preacher, Brother Paul, if every preacher in America or in the world right now would take and, and write a copy of the Torah for themselves, they might start following it. That's exactly right. They might. That's what changed us. That's what changed me is when I started preaching from the beginning <clears throat> in sequence and in context, it really caused me to look at it from a different perspective. To seek leads to laying up or leads to storing or hiding. Matthew chapter 6, verse 19 through 21, lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Is that simple? Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Thy word have I hid in my heart. Thy word have I hid under my bed. Thy word have I hid in my nightstand. No, no, no. Thy word have I hid in my heart. Why? If we have it in our heart, it's going to cause us to live it out and to walk it out. Remember what the renewed covenant is. The renewed covenant there is in Jeremiah chapter 31, I believe it is. Actually, let me just read it. I believe it's in um, <clears throat> Hebrews chapter number eight. Let me just let me just go there real quick. I did not put this one in the Hebrews chapter number eight and verse number eight. For finding fault with him, he said, "Behold, the days come, saith Yahweh, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. New covenant, a renewed covenant, renewed covenant to who? Not to the Gentiles, the house of Judah, house of Israel." <clears throat> He says, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt because they continue not in my covenant and I regarded them not, saith Yahweh, for this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith Yahweh. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts and I will be to them an Elohim and they shall be to me a people. And so there is the renewed covenant not so much in tables of stone, but in the heart, in the fleshly heart uh, of the individual in order that we may walk out his, his law and walk out his commandments and live by them on a daily basis. Not based upon what, what a church or a preacher tells you, but based upon what thus saith Yahweh. <clears throat> Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Seeking leads to laying up. Seeking leads to laying up, <clears throat> laying up his word as a treasure. And if it is something valuable to you, 
and important to you, you're not going to wait for somebody to tell you what it says. You're going to open the pages and you're going to find out what it says for yourself. Uh, as my as my friend, Brother Mike Johnson, used to always say, uh, pick up your own spoon, feed yourself. If it's really valuable, it's really a treasure, you're going to open it up and you're going to read it for yourself and you're going to study it for yourself. <clears throat> so seeking leads to laying up. Proverbs chapter two says, my son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding. Yea, if thou criest after knowledge and liftest up thy voice for understanding, if thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her as hid treasures, then shalt thou understand the fear of Yahweh and find the knowledge of Elohim for Yahweh giveth wisdom out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. If you receive my words and hide my commandments, then you'll have the understanding and the fear of Yahweh and the knowledge of Elohim. Listen, very important, very important that we understand that, that to, to, to seek, seeking leads to laying up or hiding. When you seek the word and you seek for him, uh, um, obedience, let's, let's see, cleansing comes by obedience. Obedience comes by seeking. And then seeking leads to laying up and you're seeking the word. You're seeking that treasure. You're looking for it. And all of a sudden you find it and, oh, I got to hide this. I need to keep this. And you're going to store it and you're going to lay it up. If it's, if it's important to you, if it's valuable, <clears throat> seeking leads to laying up, laying up leads to learning. Psalm 119, 12, blessed art thou, O Yahweh, teach me thy statutes. So as we, as we become clean by obedience, and then obedience comes by seeking, and then seeking leads to laying up. Laying up leads to learning. As we hide more in our heart, and as we hide and store up more of the word, it causes us to learn more. Blessed art thou, O Yahweh, teach me thy statutes. John 14, 26, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said to you. He shall teach you all things. <clears throat> as we seek for truth, as we seek for knowledge, as we seek for understanding, and we lay that up, and we store that, and we hide that in our heart, then we begin to learn. We begin to process. It begins to make more sense. Then we say, oh, well, give me some more of that. And now, now experience has bred knowledge. Learning breeds experience and experience breeds knowledge. I had that right. Learning breeds, no, oh, learning, <laughs> learning breeds knowledge, knowledge breeds experience. So as the more you learn, the more knowledge you receive, the more experience you grow. So laying up leads to learning. As we're laying up those things and hiding those words in our heart, we're learning them and we're applying them to our life and we're walking in them on a daily basis, learning his ordinances, learning his statutes, learning that which is prescribed. That's what a statute is, that which is prescribed. <clears throat> learning also leads to declaring. Look in Psalm 119, 13. With my lips have I declared all the judgments of thy mouth. Once you, once you have uh, laid up and you're beginning to learn, that learning leads to declaration. I guess declaration would have been a good word to use instead of declaring. Declaration, that means you're putting it out there. With my lips have I declared all the judgments of thy mouth. Remember what that, that verse I, I quoted earlier about Matthew 28? where it says to go out into all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go into highways and hedges, compel them to come in that, that my house may be full. Going out and telling others the, the good news of, of Yahweh and Yeshua. That's what that's talking about. When we learn, 
that learning leads to declaration. We declare what, what, what we know. Matthew 10, 27 says, what I tell you in darkness, that speak ye in light and what you hear in the ear, that preach you upon the housetops. Acts 4, 20, the disciples said, for we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. Once you learn something, how, 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 many, how many remember, of course, Miss Sharon could answer this. How many times have I learned something new and I just can't shut up about it? And she's laughing over here. <laughs> you get some new knowledge, some new understanding, some new revelation. Brother Paul, remember when we came into the Zadok calendar and we started learning the, the true biblical calendar? We started learning Yahweh's calendar and Yahweh's plan. And we start, remember how we learned all those things and all, and man, we just couldn't stop talking about it. And, and people would look at us like a calf at a new gate and, and we would go to tell somebody something and we had dumped the whole truckload on them and uh, totally blow them out of the water because our learning led to declaration. We, 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 it was coming out of us. We wanted to just bust before we could get it out. I remember when we were coming into more of the Torah truth and understanding the things that we had messed up in within the confines of the local assembly and the local church and you know how we had uh, how we had uh, messed up on the the day of worship and we had messed up on on uh holidays and pagan celebrations and not done the feast days and not done the things that Yahweh had commanded and you know and we were eating unclean and we were not worshiping on the sabbath and you know we started coming into those things and I remember I told my daughter those things and, and I sat down with her, her, her and her husband. And I, I, once I got started, I couldn't stop. I couldn't shut up. And I think I scared him to death because the learning led to decoration. It was, I was so full. I wanted to, to tell everybody about it. I wanted to tell everybody about it. That's right. Fasting, researching, shouting in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and you're getting all this and your wife's looking at you like, uh, honey, what have you been smoking? You know, what have you been drinking? Are, are you like crazy? Do I have to take you to the mental hospital and get you, get you admitted? You know, my wife was thinking to me like, well, uh, he's, he's kind of gone crazy, gone off the deep end. When we begin to seek, we seek, <clears throat> We, we, we lay up, we hide those things in our heart. We store them in our, in our heart. We lay those things up and then it, then it leads to our learning and our knowledge. And then that learning leads to declaration. And we just, we just got to tell it with my lips. Have I declared all the judgments of thy mouth? We've just got to tell it. Tell what? Tell everybody that the, the Torah and the law and the commandments still apply. They still apply. The whole Bible is still relevant. And that learning knowledge leads to declaration. But then declaration or declaring leads to rejoicing. Psalm 119, 14, I have rejoiced in the way of thy testimonies as much as in all riches. That declaring or that declaration leads to rejoicing. Job 23, 12 said, neither have I gone back from the commandment of, thy, of, of, of his lips. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than necessary food. Jeremiah 15, 16, thy words were found and I did eat them and thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of mine heart, for I am called by thy name, O Yahweh, Elohim of hosts. Declaration leads to rejoicing. We rejoice over the opportunity that we got to tell somebody something. You know, we'd like for all of them to receive it, but they don't. <clears throat> I think of all the, the multitudes that walked away from Messiah. There in John chapter number six said that he started talking about the bread of life and, 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 you know, telling them that, you know, that they need to eat him. And, oh man, that, that just blew him out, out of the water. He's talking metaphorically and they're just absolutely just, you know, thinking he's crazy. He's got a devil in him. And they walked away and they didn't follow him anymore. And he turned to the disciples. He said, well, you also walk away. And, and Peter said, where are we going to go? You're the only one that has the true words of life. 
once we get to that declaration part and we we declare the truth, we rejoice. I remember, I remember when I surrendered to preach. And uh <clears throat> actually, even before that, I remember when when I got I really got my heart right with the father in 1986. I've questioned for a long time whether I was really saved from 1975 to 86. You know, I, I don't think it really matters. I mean, I know I am now, but uh, uh, I know in 1986, I I really, really, really had a change, and Father really got a hold of my heart, and it was a severe change in my life. And uh, working at a at a grocery store warehouse here in in North Carolina, and um, all the guys, you know, my wife got me a Jesus Saves ball cap, and I wear that to work, and. And uh, all those heathens said, ah, you'll be back in six months. You'll be back in six months. That was 1986. And I ain't been back yet. Then I surrendered to preach in 1988. And, and man, everybody was like, ah, yeah, you know, it's just a fad. You know, you'll get past it. You'll get past it. And I ain't got past it yet. 88, uh, coming up on 33 years, 33 years. And, uh, I ain't got over it yet. I've not got over it yet. And and that declaring, that declaration, that that desire to to declare the truth of of Yahweh leads to rejoicing. Thy words were found, and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart, for I am called by thy by thy name, O Yahweh Elohim of hosts. Declaring leads to rejoicing. I have rejoiced in the way of thy testimonies as much as in all riches. <clears throat> you know, if we've got uh, Yahweh and we've got a relationship with the Father, we're we're richer than uh, than any any uh, of the wealthiest in the world. We have much more than what they have, because everything they have is temporal and is going to burn up, and blow away. What we have is everlasting and eternal. But then in verse 15, meditation leads to respect. Now, I know a lot of people are afraid of that word meditation. They think of some whole kind of junk. Um, <clears throat> what's that called? Yo yo yoga. Yogi Bear. Hello, boo boo. Hey, get a pick in the basket. <laughs> We're not talking about that type of meditation. But in Psalm 119, 15, says, I will meditate in thy precepts and have respect unto thy ways. To meditate means to muse, to ponder or study. Did you know what amusement means? You know, you have amusement parks. The word amuse, amuse means not to think. When you muse on something, and that and that that's 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 terminology that's not used in our society anymore. But amusement, I'm going to go to the amusement park. We're going to go to Six Flags or Worlds of Fun, or we're going to go to Carowinds or, you know, some Disney World. We're going to ride the rides. It's amusement. Why? That way we don't have, don't, don't have to think. Many people go into churches to be amused and to be entertained. That way they don't have to think. But to meditate means to muse. That's right. Joshua 1.8, do not let the book of the Torah depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night so that you guard to do it according to all that's written therein. Then you'll make your way prosperous and act wisely. That's correct. But to meditate is to muse or to study or ponder, to think about. My my grandparents, my, my grandfather, my grandmother, you said, you need to think on that for a little bit. My father-in-law, he's, had a had a had a wonderful way of expressing himself. He said, "You need to get you some schooling." And I I say that all the time, and my wife gets tickled because she can hear her father say that. You get you some schooling. We need to meditate. If you meditate on the precepts and study on the precepts and st and ponder his word and think about his word, it will cause you to have respect unto his ways. The word respect means to show regard or to pay attention. Problem is, people don't pay attention to what they read. They read the Bible with the preconceived notion of what they've already been told to believe and how they're supposed to believe it. 
well, this is what this verse means, and this is the way you're supposed to believe it. And so, therefore, they read it with that preconceived notion as to how it's supposed to be uh, interpreted. But when we meditate on his law and meditate on his word and meditate on his precepts, it'll cause us to have respect unto his ways, to muse and to study and to ponder, then it'll cause us to regard those things. When we respect something, we regard it and we pay attention to it. Uh, that's what Psalm 119, 15 is talking about. I will meditate in thy precepts and have respect unto thy ways. I will regard your ways. I will re I'll pay attention to your ways. Yeah, Gary, that's, that's right. Your dad used to say, I buy you books and I buy you books and all you do is eat the pages. Were you a goat? <laughs> meditating on his word, meditating on his, don't, don't, and see, this is the problem that I have. This is, it's just, just a personal thing. Please don't misunderstand when I say this, because I'm not saying that these are bad. Okay. I'm not saying that, that, that there's anything wrong with them, but it's just that I have the, the, the problem I have with devotionals and devotional booklets. A devotional book that will give you one little verse of scripture, and then they will give you a whole dissertation of what they think about that verse. And so you're supposed to take that verse of scripture, and then you're supposed to read what the author's rendition and what their thought is on that verse and, and what that means to them. But there's a problem with that because everybody's got an opinion, an opinion like an earlobe, okay? Some people have two. And so it's very, very important that we ponder Yahweh's word in context. That's why the little devotional, I, I don't, I, that's why I, th I think a lot of, a lot of Christians are in the same boat as a lot of Messianics uh, and Hebrew roots people. They have their little, their little go-to verses and their little go-to sermons that, you know, that they, they put in, in their little box. And this is what they operate in. Like I said, I, the, please don't take me wrong. I, I'm not saying that your devotionals are bad. I'm just saying for as far as for me, the devotionals are not beneficial to me because they give me one little verse and I'm supposed to muse on that. Right. That's right, Brother Paul. Cut and paste theology. That's exactly right. That is exactly right. And, and when, when we do that, we don't get the whole meaning of what, the father is supposed to supposed to be teaching us. That's another problem that I have with uh, with what uh, a lot of the Sabbath keepers do that do the one year Torah study. Man, the first the first study on the first day of the new year, or or when they start the new Torah study at the end of uh, at the end of Tabernacles, is Genesis chapters one through six. Oh my soul! It took us over a month to get through those six chapters because there's so much in it and they do it in one, in, in one, one hour, two hour setting. And there's so much missed. Uh, just like, you know, those, when we were in the, when we were in the confines of the church, you know, people would say, well, read through the Bible in a year, read through the Bible in a year. I read through the Bible in a year and you know what? I didn't learn anything, but when I started focusing on what the word said and took my time through it and mused on it and studied on it and pondered on it, it really caused me to have more respect to the Father's ways and learn more. That's exactly right. And learn more. Meditation and musing and study leads to respect. When we study the word, study to show thy proved, uh, the, study to show thyself approved unto Elohim, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. When we study his word and we think on his word, it causes us to have respect, to regard, and to pay attention. Hey, somebody help me. I just thought, of, what's, that, uh, what's that verse scripture? And I believe it's in... Um, I believe it's in Timothy. Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever thing are of good report, think on these things. I don't know if that's Timothy, Thessalonians, or Philippians. I can't remember. But but we're to think on those things, those things that 
have to do with his word. Meditating day and night, musing, studying, ponder, because that meditation leads to respect. It leads to us regarding his word and it leads us to paying attention to what his word says. Psalm 1, 1 and 2 says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of Yahweh, and in his law doth he meditate, muse, study, ponder, day and night. His delight is in the Torah of Yahweh. It's in the law of Yahweh. It's in the commandments of Yahweh. Oh, well, we don't have to do those no more. Jesus did all that. So, so you can just go out there and break the law anytime you want to. Well, Jesus fulfilled, Jesus did all that. We don't have to keep all that stuff anymore. I guess adultery is okay now. I guess stealing's okay. Idolatry is okay and all that kind of thing. Yeah, th there it is. Wait a minute. What, what is that? HP. Is that Philippians 4 8? I can't, t I, I can't see what that was. PHP, Philippians 4 8. I, you know, all, all I see, Paul's HP. Hewlett Packard. <laughs> yeah, it's Philippians. It's Philippians 4 8. <laughs> Finally. Finally, my brethren, whatsoever things are true, yeah, there you go, PHP, yeah. Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. But his delight is in the law or the Torah or the commandments of Yahweh. And in his law or Torah doth he meditate, study, ponder, and muse day and night. Why? Why? Because that meditation leads to respect. James 1.25, but whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. And then last but not least, Psalm 119, 16, cleansing leads to delight. Cleansing leads to delight. We've come full circle. Cleansing, cleansing comes by obedience, but cleansing leads to delight. Psalm 119, 16, I will delight myself in thy statutes. I will not forget thy word. Do you know there's joy in being clean before Yahweh? Psalm 40, verse 8 said, I delight to do thy will, O my Elohim. Yea, thy law is within my heart. I delight to do thy will. Do you know, and I, listen, listen, I, again, I'm not trying to be ugly and pointed, but listen, if you don't have a desire to do the will of, of the Father and to live according to his word, you better check up. You better check up. There ain't no way, no way the Holy Spirit leads us in four and five and six different directions. Ain't no way. Bible don't teach that. I delight to do your will, not my will, your will. Oh, my Elohim, yea, thy law, thy Torah is within my heart. You know, we read those Psalms and we teach those Psalms and we preach those Psalms and and, and we, we skip right over the law part. We skip right over the commandment part. I delight to do that. What is, what is the will of the Father? The will of the Father is for, for us to do, to do according to his commandments. Just be obedient. Just do what I ask you to do. Is that simple? Yea, thy Torah is within my heart. Yes, we are frail. Yes, we are sin. Yes, we fall by the wayside, but we're not supposed to lay there. We're supposed to get up, brush our knees off, wipe off the blood, wipe off the dust, and keep moving forward. Keep moving forward. Romans 7, 22, for I delight in the law of Elohim after the ember man. Paul, Paul, I thought Paul said that the law was gone. Romans 7, 22, for I delight in the law of Elohim. 
How can Paul delight in the law if it's, if it's done away with? For I delight in the law of Elohim after the inward man. Remember, it's spiritual. We're talking about spiritual. Cleansing leads to delight. I will delight myself in thy statutes. I will not forget thy word. I think that's why so many people are miserable these days, even within the confines of religion and uh, even within the, uh, uh, in, in Christianity. People are, are just miserable because their delight is not to, not to, to uh, uh, walk in his statutes their delight is not to live by his word. Their delight is not to be obedient. Their delight is to make it their own way and to do their own thing and to live by their own rules. No, no, no. That's why, that's why they're miserable. You know, if, if we would just follow his word and his teaching, you know, it's really easy. It's really easy. You know, if, if you go to a job, and we, 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 are, we are insurance inspectors. I, I manage an insurance inspection company. And uh, we're, we're just uh, testing a new mobile app for our phone, where we can, uh, which we're using a mobile app anyway, but we can take pictures and we can put everything into the report right on our phone. And everything is just labeled. It says, take the address picture, take the front picture, take the left picture, take the right picture, take the side picture. Take the rear picture. Take the take the hazard picture. Take the picture of the pool. Take the picture of the of the shed, and it just goes. I mean, it's just real simple. And you know, Father's Word is the same way. If we just do it, I don't know how many. There's thousands, thousands of laws in our in our country. Thousands that we we can't we can't we don't even know what they all are. There's 613, 613 laws, commandments, 613. Of those 613, not all of them apply to me and not all of, of, of them apply to you. Some apply to men, some apply to women, some apply to priests, some apply to farmers, some apply to servants, some apply to government workers, some apply to, to uh, those in authority, some apply to those who are in submission, some apply to, to different people. They don't all apply to me, but the ones that do apply to me are real easy to keep. Real easy to keep. It's real easy to eat clean. It really is. I don't have to eat unclean meat. If I do, I choose to, but it's real easy not to. It's real easy to worship on the, on the Sabbath or the Shabbat. It's real easy. You just do it on the seventh day instead of on the first day. It's real easy. It is real easy to keep the feast because I don't have to keep Christmas. I don't have to keep Easter. It's a whole lot cheaper. <laughs> and I'm doing what the Father's commanded us to do. It's real easy. It's easy. It's easy. I'll probably some of the hardest things is loving your neighbor as yourself. And, you know, but that, that still can be accomplished if you have a delight in Him and it's in your heart. That's exactly right. I delight to do thy will, O Elohim. Yea, thy law is within my heart. So how does one cleanse his way? Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed to Yahweh's holy word and obeying his commandments. Let's put off all manner of man-made and religious ideas of how to be clean. <clears throat> yes, Miss Carrie, there goes the musical notes again. Amen. We can only be clean through and by him, his way, not our way. And his way is through his word, through his word only. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto, according to thy word. Well, thank you for joining us tonight. And I hope and pray that this was a blessing to you. It's been a blessing for us to be with you tonight. And I appreciate the opportunity. Appreciate those that joined us. Appreciate those that participated uh, and helped me out with some verses. Thank you, Brother Paul, Miss Tina, Miss Carrie. 
and uh, share this to your page and maybe it'll be a blessing to somebody else and uh, pray for us and we'll pray for you and and uh, hope you have a great Sabbath day tomorrow. And make sure that you rest and make sure you focus upon him. Make sure you convocate and meet with other believers and do exactly how we've been instructed to do. Amen. Do uh, keep in mind, if you're in the Salisbury, North Carolina area, we'd be glad to have you come join us two o'clock on Saturday afternoons for our Sabbath meeting. May Yahweh richly bless you is our prayer. You pray for us and we'll pray for you. We'll look forward to seeing you next time here on the Renewed Covenant Fellowship broadcast.